Let's see what we have here. Who we got? Who's here? Who we got? Uh oh. Here we go. Little buddy. Here's the guy. I do. Here's the guy. Here he is. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yes. Where, where's his I intro can hear song? Him. Where's his intro I can hear song? Him. Mark, what was your intro song at Kent? Um, maybe it was a bunch, but Smooth Criminal. <laughs> Alien Ant Farm. The Alien Ant Farm. It wasn't the King of Pop. But it now Alien it was. Ant Farm. It now was, it would probably be Katy Perry. <laughs> Which Katy Perry would it be now? Hey, can you get us a? Can get you get us a video? A, Where's your video? video? Sorry, yeah, amateur. <laughs> ah, there there he is. is. There's our guy. <laughs> hey, does it hurt? Are your are your hands and, and uh, arms and limbs numb at all anymore now? I think they were numb for 20 years or so. Yeah, they? no, I'm actually pretty good. Uh, my legs are kind of hurting, but uh, can you hear me good? Yeah. yeah. Why yeah. are your legs hurting? With your back, your neck? Yeah, I think just the time off uh, and not climbing ladders and I've been one wheeling everywhere I go. I don't walk anymore. Oh, you do the one wheel. The the yeah. It's like an electric. It's pretty cool. It's a big fat tire. Yeah, it's like a wakeboard or snowboard. Is it remote or no? You just is it like a skateboard or is it remote? It's electric. Uh, it's like a you hold your hoverboard from Back to the Future too. Yeah, but, but it's, it's one, big, one fat big, wheel. Wheel. One big one fat big wheel. One big fat wheel. You can go on the beach. You can go uh, off roading or you can take a joy ride. It's been my best therapy because uh, it makes you turn. Uh, it made me heal real fast. So a lot of balance checks. A lot of balance in it. It's good for arthritis, but if you take it off, you could break your neck again. So you gotta <laughs> take it easy. Jeez, man. Of course. So of so course. We're, so you're in your studio. Is that where you're at right now? Yeah, I'm in a shop. Uh, it's kind of a cool place. You would love it. It's like a field house. So my buddy from childhood lived here. This is how I got here. I always used to come with him on vacation. And I always uh, said it needed an artist, glass blower type guy. And then I just made it my mission to get here. Uh, but I actually came back and uh, my friend has a fitness studio and uh, he had an extra warehouse in the back. And we made a deal. If I helped him fix his place up, I would get paid for rent couple of years so wow. being an artist that's the hardest thing is coming up with a monthly mortgage kind of payment because it's kind of sporadic but uh kind of made it work and now we live on an island i spear fish uh oyster shrimp we nice. eat about 40 percent of our food is from the sea that's awesome so so where, you're in where is it where is it actually where are you at uh, actually I'm in St. Simons Island, Georgia. So it's an hour and a half south of Savannah and an hour north of Jacksonville. And it's in the Golden Isles of Georgia. It's like a secret little um, know, wonderland. It's, uh, it's <laughs> gem? Gem, it's if you will? Gem. It's a gem. Yeah, it's like a lot of marshland, Charleston type-ish. Uh, you know, a lot of kayaking, a lot of fishing. Uh, who's your buddy that Who's your buddy that brought you down there? So my childhood friend from kindergarten, uh, Charlie Young. Uh, I don't know if you met him, but his family has uh, treated me like kind of your family, uh, like one of theirs, and it's been a good supporter of my arts. And my friend is always. Uh, willing to kind of help me out so it, awesome. it's kind of weird it's like wrestling and art i'm in a fitness center but then there's an artist studio in the back but uh it works pretty well because a lot of their clients are retired and they peek in and see what i'm doing and i'll get work from that and uh, and i don't work out at all there's uh i'm looking at one of those airdyne machines right now nice so am nice. i so am I. Oh, uh, I haven't been on one in 20 years. It's like my arch nemesis. Uh, <laughs> but I'm looking at one right now. I picked one up for 50 bucks like two months ago. Drew's really? been using the crap out of it more than I. <laughs> but yeah, those things are brutal, right? I hate them because it would always cool you off when you're trying to make weight. I Got to put that mat tape on it. 
Yeah, we mine has a blocker on it. Mine has a oh, big does steel it? thing on it. Yeah, mine has a big like a it has a blocker on it. You could probably weld something on there, right, Mark? Yeah, well, I'm, come on, who we're we talking to here? Come on, man. So, is that your logo then? Is that your Amaru? Yeah. So this started in college. That was my tattoo, remember? Yeah, uh, yeah. And I just stuck with it. It's modified a little bit, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I have stickers and t-shirts hey I, I have your you must threw this away i have this from college oh you're, that's like a second <laughs> that's a, a second paperweight you ever made or what was it i no. got a glass back here i got a glass with a bunch of pens in it nice on the desk behind me yeah glass there's like first that you could sell and then there's seconds that might have a scratch or imperfection okay and i usually throw those out or recycle them but a lot of people you know, 20 years later, it looks brand new. That's the cool thing about glass is uh, you dust it off. It looks like I just made it yesterday. Yeah. You know? Right. Right. It's really incredible, man. Hey, Mark, when, you know, so we talk about you, you had a, a neck surgery and a back surgery, right? What did you actually have done to your, to your, uh, with your back surgery? Uh, so it was more uh, spinal actually. It was what Peyton Manning had, but it was an extra vertebrate. I think it was three vertebrate. So it was like four, five, and six were broken, I guess, uh, 15, 20 years, who knows. Um, they don't really know what it is. It could be numerous events. Uh, it could be my nasty neck bridge. But uh, I had a bunch of surgeries in college, nothing major. I was pretty diesel, you know, uh, but ligaments and stuff. But after, I probably need to get my neck fixed checked out but I was just so sick of surgeries and being down every off season I kind of just avoided it and then I muscled through it but it's kind of caught up with me and I do a big job and then uh, I feel like my shoulder was broken or, uh, I was losing a lot of feeling in my hand and then we found out it took a while many doctors a lot of people like didn't want it they'd look at my x-ray and they'd be like there's too much going on. It kind of scared him. They didn't know what to do. But it was finding the right doctor. And uh, he was studied Peyton Manning surgery. And uh, it's basically the same one. And uh, what I liked about it is he said, you'll be better than you were 20 years ago. Or uh, if you, um, like Peyton Manning played six months later, which is pretty incredible because right. I'm about 10 months. And I'm still pretty tight, but uh, it's been a world of difference. I didn't know I was, I wasn't sleeping for like 15 years. I just found out what real sleep is. So uh, it's pretty amazing, but it was pretty brutal. It was like a cougar bit my neck for about a month or so. And then uh, it's constant stretching, you know, anyways, being a wrestler at our age, you get a little sore. You're kind of, I always tell people I'm like an old Ford truck in Ohio. Like it's hard to get it started, but once you get it warmed up, it's ready to go, you know? <laughs> oh, oh, little buddy, man. Good stuff. Yeah. Man. How many nicknames have I had in my life? I got a lot of nicknames. Little buddy, little Mick. What else? What else? Why? 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 That's the one. I mean, That's asking you why. I mean, always asking you why. Jack. It was a Jack Hagman thing. I remember that. Yeah, that started. I actually, uh, I need a patent that or do copyright that or something. I say it once in a while on these shows because these designers just ask me the craziest things to do, and it's just like, why is like the F word? Like it just fits in. And it could mean multiple things, you know. It started because Tagman, uh, I think, bugging me, eating my food when I was cutting weight and stuff. I remember we had those those uh, navy blue shorts with the gold panel on them, and he wrote Y on it. Do you remember that? It said yeah. Y on his shorts. And then I my right ear's cauliflower because one day Hagman ripped my headgear off. I was telling the Bassets that story this weekend. They're the, they're the best youth wrestlers in the country, middle school kids. And I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, one of them is a fifth grader, and he's got a gnarly, big, fat cauliflower ear. And I was like, oh, how'd you get that? And he's like, I was wrestling my brother, and his brother probably beats him up pretty good. And then I said, well, let me tell you, I got mine. I had this 
teammate that was just a angry. Just, remember how angry he was that one year? He was pretty. Yeah. yeah? Anyhow, yeah, yeah. he ripped my headgear off in like a like a uh, like I was in a tripod quad pod position and I was trying to pull him off me and he did the head and arm on me and I yeah. was able to peel him off and my headgear got turned here on my face and it ripped and scraped my ear and it, I just it was like immediate like brr, brr, brr. Uh, yeah he was, was an animal huh yeah he was he was real strong big bean <laughs> I know you loved him he I see him up. sometimes on the state tournament he's the EMS sometimes on the shots some- Jack yeah, yeah, I, Jack. It's, it's been a couple of years, but he's down in Columbus area. I've, I've run into a couple of state tournaments. It's been a couple of years, but yeah, he goes every year. Him and his dad and his brother. Are well, he was working at the one year. He was the MS. Yeah. So. he's uh, yeah, he's up there. Jack. Him and his brother. I think his brother. I can't quote me, but I think they're top uh, lieutenant. And Jack's definitely uh, not. She. I, I don't know the lingo, but. He's definitely one of the head guys in Columbus fire department, Columbus yeah. fire department. It's not yet. And they will do like, I think they'll, they double as EMS sometimes, whatever their shifts are. I don't, I don't know the structure of that kind of like you and I, you don't know the ranking of it. Right. Yeah. I, I saw the brother was a Lieutenant on the fa- on yeah. Facebook. Lieutenant, yeah. Yeah. So, and he, I mean, was a, he was a grappler too. Uh, Aaron, he actually beat me, uh, I think my freshman year in the uh, Bill D's tournament. Really? Kind of was my reason I went to St. B's for a year. Uh, huh. And they, they were from they, Buckeye, right? They were from Buckeye. Buckeye. Yeah, they were They were good leg riders. and Buckeye Bucks. Wow. Mean. But why? It comes from Jack so, Hagman. That's why. So, Mark, though, that's – uh. You got some. You have some stories, right? You got. You're on TV shows now, right? You've done some some work for Shaq, I guess. How? What's that? What's that hat? What's your hat say there? Oh, this is actually uh, your treehouse. You okay. know, you're on the treehouse show too, right? Treehouse Masters. Yeah, I got lucky to. It was all, you know, it's all kind of luck if i change anything in my life or it changed the way i am it wouldn't work out this way uh but treehouse this is the guy uh, i'll give him some props he's uh he's a producer and he first saw me on my first show uh and he's been the main guy what was your first show me uh so yeah, my life stories, they always joke, some of these film guys, uh, they're going to do a documentary on me, and it's going to be like Dances with Wolves, like three and a half hours, because uh, they get everything in. <laughs> oh, God. But my first show, I got off of, uh, so I went back to get my master's, it's going to be back and forth, I guess. So uh, I went to Atlanta to get my master's because my glass blowing, I got hit by a car. And uh, the day of my grand opening here on the island, I broke my wrist and my elbow and uh, pretty lucky to be alive. So uh, sitting, kind of getting healing, I didn't know what to do next. I couldn't really do construction. I wanted to keep the dream alive. I always want to get my master's. So I saw a commercial for grad school and I applied and I got in right away. It's SCAD. I'd recommend it. To, it's like the St. Ed's of art schools. Yale uh, is a real prestigious art school. And uh, that's really made a deci- uh, defining factor of my success as a sculptor, fabricator. And so during that time, which hard to believe, it was harder than college wrestling. Right. Uh, grad school at 32 with the a baby in Atlanta, uh, kind of left all my, you know, leaving home, you leave, you kind of lose all your connections and you're kind of going to war with people you don't know and you got to prove yourself being small and having cauliflower ear, you know, it's a little weird in Georgia. Uh, but yeah, so it was pretty hard because uh, I thought I was going to go in there and make everything and they show you this American chopper shop and they kind of entice you. Oh, you're going to make this stuff. But then when they get you, it's like a mental boot camp. 
and they, they're really trying to figure out why you make art, why you do what you do. And uh, I literally probably wrote two, 250 pages of writing. I had to, my brother-in-law kind of taught me how to do Chicago style and rewrite because it's been since high school, like, you know, and undergrad, I was mostly art. Uh, so it was kind of a lot of art history and I had to do a thesis. Uh, 60 page thesis, you can read it online. Uh, Zeb would probably be pretty surprised at my writing. I had a lot of help, but uh, so I got through that and I had to do an internship. And uh, it was kind of like I was 32 being an intern. I was not really looking forward to it and I was paying the school, but I wasn't going to school. So, but then I, I found this HGTV internship and uh, it was for a woodworker and they needed some help that they, uh, a lot of these guys get in these shows and it's just so much to deal with. Uh, so the, these shows are like military. Uh, they got this stuff like ducks in a row, kind of like your tournaments and they don't mess around. Uh, but I just went in as like an intern and then uh, I do what I do and uh, just, Push a little harder. Being from Ohio kind of gives me a little advantage, I think, because we're tough. Deal with snow down here, uh, and being a wrestler too, I guess, probably sets me apart. But I just got lucky to be with like an earlier host who was just kind of who's really cool. His name is Chip Wade. Uh, you probably see him on Fox and Friends. He's one of my good friends now, and. Probably one of the main reasons I'm still doing what I do. He got me a bunch of tools from Miller, uh, donated, um, which being a welder, glass blower, it's real expensive. That's why the school's a little better for it. So it's been a battle to build up the studio. So being on these shows, a lot of times I would work for cheaper to get uh, equipment. And that's kind of how I did it. And luckily all the designers were younger starting out and I just, they just started hearing, Mark can do this, Mark can do that, let's do this. So I was blowing glass, you know, a lot of, it's hard to get on. A lot of times it's about the host uh, where I would portray, make the stuff kind of like a cooking show. I'd have it made and then the host would step in. But uh, they'd get, the camera follows like cool stuff. And the, a lot of times it's just over and over. So when they get sparks flying or glass blowing, like the camera would just draw to me. I, you know, I'm not an actor in any, any sense, but I am a performer, I always have been. And uh, I have a lot of good one-liners. And I, I tell the director, like, they tell me to repeat that. And I'm like, you know, you need to be on that. I, I don't even know what I said. Like, you gotta get it first take, you know? Comes out natural with you, right? Yeah, if I try too hard and that's what, uh, you know, in wrestling, that's what I've learned. If you try too hard, it, it could be, you know, counterproductive. But uh, so literally, literally that first show, uh, I proved myself. People kind of so then they this guy here is like they had they got hired for another season. I ended up doing four seasons with them, and by the what end, what is the uh, actual show, Mark? What is the name of the show? So it's called Elbow Room. It's not like Property Brothers or anything. It was kind of like your Saturday morning nine o'clock. It actually won an Emmy, a daytime wow. Emmy. Uh, Elbow Room won a daytime Emmy that you were on. And how many seasons of Elbow Room were you on, Mark? Four. You were on four uh, seasons. And that Was that the first one on HT, HGTV? That was my first ever show. And it was kind of lucky because I got some camera time and I get some one-liners. They like bigger guys, you know. There's a lot of picking on the little guy type thing and – uh but they, they really, uh, the Chip Wade is a genius, kind of sees people's talents and then brings the best out of them. So he started seeing what I could do and he just kept changing his designs to uh, forging, concrete, glass blowing. But uh, pretty much was a boot camp, uh, Navy SEALs training for fabrication because uh, half of the stuff I didn't know what I was doing, but they'd be like, hey, Mark, you're doing this tomorrow. And I'm like, okay, I can do that. 
and then I Google it and kind of refresh it and then I kind of wing it. And uh, a lot of it, you know, it's just knowing your tools and it's kind of like wrestling. You just got to go out there and if you don't sign up for the tournament, you're not going to place, you know, so it's just getting out there. But uh, what was nice is the girls, the designers are the ones that keep me busy. Uh, so the shows, is, I do a couple a year. Uh, sometimes it's like the States, you don't know if you're gonna make it back. So I kind of live in the moment. After this last show, I'm kind of more in the business. Uh, a lot of my previous shows before COVID were uh, behind the scenes. Like I did uh, the Jersey Shore came back, uh, one shot at love or something. So I built the whole like dungeon up in the penthouse suite in the uh, links at Lennon. And I was doing crazy stuff like, it was kind of weird. We're putting cameras and all, it's just a weird thing. Uh, so Elbow Room, Jersey Shore, Return to Love. What are the other shows you've been on? One Shot at Love. Uh, One Shot at Love. Yeah, that was more behind the scenes. So okay. my main, my big shows were Elbow Room, and then that led to Super Great Rooms, which I was kind of a character. It was a DIY network. Uh, okay. We'd pimp out uh, living rooms, and okay. that kind of honed my skills. And then Chip kind of went into real estate, then I – this guy here, it's a small business. It's like wrestling. Everybody knows everybody. So once you prove yourself, they start, you know, they start calling me. You're Usually in. I'm like one call away. So uh, then I went to Treehouse Masters. I might have had a couple other in there. Just what are all the Treehouse ones? You've done a couple different Treehouse ones, haven't you? Yeah, I've been on four or five. Wow. Um, and a lot of times it was just hired as a carpenter like my buddy needed some extra labor but uh you know these animal planet hosts it's more real it's their real life it's more of a documentary hctv is kind of you know it's a production so they got to have their uh so it's lineup. two different shows right i mean two different ideas kinda. two different ideas and treehouse was the first place that i went to and there was five to 10 guys just as good as me at like making stuff. I mean, they're the real deal there. I learned a lot from them, but uh, the best is the, he was a real host, uh, Pete. And uh, with Instagram now, by the second day, he saw like what I do. And he's like, this guy's not digging holes and putting up, you know, footings and stuff. He's going to make me a railing. So he, uh, this was my first shot. So he, he did a little pencil sketch on a napkin, gave it to me, and I was like, yeah, I'll do that. And me and him got to forge and taught him how to weld. And I actually got to do some glass at like a, a studio in North Carolina, let me borrow the kiln. So I made this awesome, it was the butterfly treehouse. Made this awesome railing and got to teach Pete. And ever since then, he's, he's loved me. And he'll text me here and there. Uh, but he's kind of retired the show uh, and he's focused on his family and he does these tree house resorts. And, uh, but then he keep bringing me back for metal. And uh, I was featured as uh, they gave me a segment and kind of did a little foraging thing on a medieval tree house. And uh, it was just really cool because a lot of the stuff on these shows people aren't gonna pay for you know it's off like it's crazy it's like over the top over the top and uh it gave me a chance to make stuff and still get paid and get my name out there uh but from there i just kind of kept going from show wherever this guy was producing he'd you know say hey we got a project can you do Hey Mark, at what point does Shaquille O'Neal get your name? What do you when do you start working for Shaquille O'Neal? The Shaq, Big Aristotle, Wilt Chamber Neasy. I know he's got a lot of different names, right? Shaq Diesel. Shaq First Diesel. off, real cool guy, right? Like like as yeah. cool as you 
Steve. He's one of the coolest people I've met. Yeah. When did Shaquille O'Neal get your name and how, how, what was your inroad with Shaquille O'Neal and working for him? So I think it was after the medieval treehouse. I had a nice little segment. The guys liked me. It's kind of hard to, you know, a lot of these TV carpenters can get egos and you get a little camera time and do the best there ever was. And so these treehouse guys are real laid back and it's, you know, I fit in good with them. And they just asked, said they needed some extra help. And it was in Atlanta because he, uh, he works in Atlanta. He and lives in McDonough, though. He has McDonough. A he's a deputy sheriff. So uh, he has a doctorate degree, too. Yeah, he's, uh, he's the real deal. And uh, so every morning, yeah, I'd see him drive away in his night rider car. He has this uh, sheriff's car that like has lights and it's just blacked out. It's awesome. Imagine getting pulled over from Chef. Be crazy. But yeah, so I just helped out and this was a carpenter and I did, I got to make him his glass. Uh, I always, if you show up and then you talk to these designers and then I talk them into stuff. So uh, I did a lot, I did a ceiling. I think that's kind of what was my last strain on my neck. Uh, but we made a, a poker tree house. So him and Charles could play poker. And, but I kind of stick out, I think. So he would joke around. He was a real funny guy. He'd be hiding in the bushes, spying on us. Jack would be hiding in the bushes. Yeah, so there's a whole, guys, yeah. Bush. That must have been a big bush. Yep. <laughs> big old a lot bush of the times he's hide hiding, it. and then you could totally see him. You know? Yeah, goofing around. I get it. He's like an a ostrich. Okay, but, what what did you did you who did the the rims? Who did the tree of rims? Was that yours? Was the tree of rims yours? So there's kind of a, so he the one that's kind of all over the internet is from a museum in I think Alabama from like a Spanish artist. Okay. So it's just a it's like 30 basketball hoops. And Shaq went to the museum or did his talk or something and it inspired him. He wanted one. But he had a post like, this is all the rims I broke. So I think shortly after, he saw what I could do. And then his chef, he's kind of the guy I talk to a lot. Uh, I don't know. He must run some of his, he does kind of all of his estate deals and stuff. Um, I think he, he said something crazy that he feeds him like 10,000 calories a day or something. I don't know what it is, but he eats a lot. So but, when um, you're, didn't your wrestling background uh, kind of led you to landing the deal with Shaq? When, Cause he was an MMA and he, he saw you had a wrestling background. Isn't that kind of that wrestling helped you get in the door there or how'd that work? Well, wrestling helped me just kind of muscle through some of these tough spots. But yeah, I think being small, he likes little guys, I think. Like, uh, who's his Kevin Hart? I think. Uh, Kevin Hart's a little guy. He's like 5'2 yeah, or 5'3. He's yeah. real little. I'm actually, yeah, fun fact uh, I'm actually 5'2. I grew an inch. On the straighten your neck? On the fix your neck? Quarter. Wow. An inch and a half, but I kind of shrank a quarter. It kind of settled in. But uh, yeah, it's kind of kind of crazy. Did you build the did you build the rim tree for him then? So he wanted his own. He didn't know where he could get it. He's like, Well, what about the, the little Italian wrestler guy? Can he do it? So the chef got a whole Amerika. Amerika. Amerika, whatever his name is. Little buddy. And uh, he sent me like a napkin drawing again. It's like a stick figure. And then uh, I said, Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll come there and I'll live in your front yard and I'll knock it out. I knocked it out in about uh, seven days. You lived in Shaquille O'Neal's front yard for seven days to build him a sculpture of basketball rims. That That's a real story. Mark once lived in Shaquille O'Neal's front yard. Or did he have like a guest house? I mean, where did you, I know a little buddy will sleep under a rock, but where did you actually stay at Shaq's? So I didn't actually stay there. I had an Airbnb. But I'm diehard. Once I get in, you know, I'm like you. I've been listening. Like, I live it. I'm not, it's not a nine to five job. It's a 24 hour job. Some days I'm up 24 hours, you know, 
or two days in a row. I can get more done in two days in a row than I can in two weeks working nine to five. But uh, so I just kind of wheeled and dealed and uh, got some metal there and I was scrapping metal and uh, I just got a bunch of stuff dropped off there. And then uh, he, his schedule is pretty tight. I mean, it's down to like 10 minutes, like 11, 10, he's here. So he scheduled me in like 15 minutes every time he leave and when he come home. So I get to see him twice a day or something. Uh, but basically he showed me a little drawing and I said, yeah, I, I can do that. And I, I made a little armature. I think I have it somewhere around here, but just like a little version of it. And he was like, that's it, man. He's like, get it done. And then, so I had a boom and I had my friend from Treehouse. Uh, She's like a ninja. Um, she was on Survivor uh, One or something. But she's like a designer and she's one of my best assistants and helpers. And she got to help me. Uh, she cut all the metal. She's real strong. And uh, yeah, kind of likes, you know, girls too, like we all do. Uh, <laughs> hey, Mark, Mark, is it like a compound? When you go there, is it like fenced and is there like a bunch of security or can you just roll up to Shaq's house? So you could roll up to it. It has like a prairie fence, but literally, dude, uh, I'd get there at nine o'clock and I'd leave probably four in the morning or something. Uh, I had a little tent set up and, you know, a little food and. So I slept a couple hours in the Airbnb, but I pretty much, there was a couple nights where I just kind of was up welding all night. And I'd see he have, you know, big cars and famous people driving up. It's like a compound. So it has his emblem, the Superman, and big gate. And uh, it's evolved. It was kind of a, a meager house for Shaq compared to his Orlando house. Yeah. Um, but he's turned it, he's built a gymnasium. He's got fountains and tree houses and but my piece is right on the street. So, so it's right can, there. People can see it. So people drive by his house. So literally by two o'clock, he had one of those big mailboxes. By two o'clock, that thing, there was mail everywhere. It was sticking out of there. Literally a hundred people a day are shoving in letters uh, asking for his help or you know, just I don't know. It was crazy every day. And I fixed the mailbox every day that the door would fall off and I'd go and put it back on. <laughs> wow. Well, hey, Mark, when uh, dealing with him, though, super cool guy, easy guy to deal with, easy to get your money from him, all that. It, just a good business experience, great experience overall. Yeah, I kind of worked uh, through his chef and it really wasn't about the money. I, I knew yeah, I probably gave him too good of a deal like everybody, but. Uh, I knew it was, you know, stamp on my brand, you know, it was literally like better than winning the state title. I mean, it was, it made it all worth it. The journey and the suffering and the survival. Um, but yeah, he, he actually double underhooked me and wrestled me for about 20 seconds. And I, I can hang with pretty much anybody. You may, you were probably my only guy that's a little too big, but he lifted me off my feet, barely touching me. I must have, he must have threw me probably five, six feet, just kind of double underhooking me. Uh, but you can see there's some videos of him MMA. He's legit. He, he actually had an exhibition with kind of a professional guy. Uh, he trained for a little while. Jack's one of the biggest physical freaks on the planet Earth in the history of humans. All right. Like, yeah. I'm not making that up. It's not like, oh, brave take, Zeb. No, he's a mutant. Shaq is an absolute physical specimen. It's not even up for debate. Oh, and he's dieseler now, I think, because he slimmed down and uh, he shredded. Like, well, he has to. His joints are all going to wear out. You're right. <laughs> Seriously. But it, it wasn't the height, because I'm always looking up uh, the people, but it was the girth. Like, his arms, biceps. dude. He's huge. He's massive. Yeah. Like you're saying, he is thick too. He's not like a. He doesn't look like 
Wilt Chamberlain or, or Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Lou Alcindor, he is like thick. Dude, if you've ever seen LeBron, he's way bigger than LeBron. I know, and LeBron, like he, I got LeBron's massive. He, I mean, just enormous. Yeah. I've stood next to LeBron, I think, in college. Or, he came to our college house a couple of times. Oh yeah, yeah. I think your your buddies bring him by. Hurley's yeah. yeah. saw him yeah. this weekend. Right. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, he Mar- at Willow Street. Yeah, they're both there this weekend. But Willow Street house, right? The yeah, Hurley's. Yeah, 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 they're one of my dearest uh, people. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people in your life along your journey that help you in wrestling or life. Um, they were a big, big deal in my wrestling uh, and then throughout life, just the stuff I learned from Mick and wrestling pretty much set the tone. I, yeah. Uh, you know, maybe sometimes. There isn't a day I don't think about some of my losses, some of my wins, but, uh, you know, everything happens for a reason. And uh, my main philosophy was like, I was old school. So their main thing was don't ever get pinned. And my brother, I remember him telling me like, you never, Wentz is never get pinned. Like you die before you get pinned. Which is kind of stupid if you think about it. It's probably why my neck is broken. But in life, if you live by that, it's actually pretty smart, you know? So every day I try not to get pinned by what the piece I'm making. Every day is a test. Uh, You know, I don't make the same thing. Uh, You know, most artists, you got to kind of make the same thing and Right. You, uh, I mean, your wrestling style is pretty exciting. And then you have this range of art, right? You kind of said how yeah. you, you got hurt and that kind of, did that shift you to public uh, art then? You, you have a, well, a history of public art too, right? Yeah. That's like my favorite thing and what I'm meant to do. These shows it's like I'm meant to do too, but uh, it's kind of a life, uh, like wrestling career. It takes a lot out of me. This last show, it took me two weeks to recover. Well, well you were in a Netflix show right before COVID hit, right? Yeah, I signed for, uh, for Restoration Impossible. I think it's like bar rescues and, and it's crazy. They uh, make the whole house over in 24 hours. But uh, there was a lot of behind the scenes. We build stuff and then install it. Like a prefab, like to make it all fit. You got to prefab stuff. You can't do it in the, the house. You got to like have pieces together, make something four pieces, take it and bo- and put it in, screw it in, bolt it in, install, yeah. right? Some of these, we'd take the whole side of the house off and forklift whatever we made in that. So but it didn't get too far because of COVID. So that got shut down. I, I'm actually on a Netflix tiny house nation. Are got- you? Tiny houses? Yeah, I've done a few of those for my other buddy. Uh, but a lot of them are from the designers who get a, you know, they get a lot of recognition from these shows. So like I was saying before, in between these shows, like I still got to make a living. Uh, so these designers feed me work, you know, oven hoods. Like people say I'm an artist. I don't really like, you know, I worked my whole life to be an artist, but then I realized I was an artist when I was three, you know? I was a wrestler when I, you know? So I'm more of a Renaissance man, I like to say, uh, you know, sculptor, fabricator, whatever you need for the day. And I learned you can't be too good for something, you know? Like one day I'm with Shaq and the next day I'm painting a door for a hundred bucks. Like, I got to keep money flowing in and so it's a constant grind, but uh, these big projects really uh, have set the tone of recognition, you know, what? now when people say like, just the, I'm the same guy probably before Shaq as I am now, but now that I've made something for Shaq and Arthur Blank, uh, I've done a lot of work with Arthur Blank, you would get a kick out of this one. So a lot of stuff is fabrication too. So it's, just like, hey, Mark, this guy flaked out. Can you build this 25-foot 
World Series table for the Atlanta Braves in two weeks. And I was like, yeah. So I ended up making the World Series table for the new SunTrust Stadium, but I think it's already changed uh, for the Battery Park. And the funny thing is, the, it was the 1997 World Series when who did they beat? Tribe. They, tribe. So I kind of, my history isn't the best, and uh, but I was a big Indians fan, and they were heckling me like, you're not going to say anything. And I was like, oh, then I saw the picture. And so that was in the interview, but there's a design process. So I got to... Uh, build this massive table and there's people signing deals on it but I uh fun fact I kind of snuck a maybe something underneath the table maybe <laughs> maybe not <laughs> okay okay hey Mark Mark when you when you talk about this you know there's a you talk about shows and you, you talk about uh, you know being on all these different shows and a lot of stuff you get, you get some people who are prima donnas, they're divas. You're anything but that, right? You're blue collar. you like you're saying, you'll, you'll fix a door. You'll shovel, you'll dig a ditch. You'll do whatever it takes to, you know, put food on the table for your family. You go out and spear fish. You do all this stuff. You're blue collar. Right. Um, and I live down the road from your, your uncles, right? The, you guys are bedrock foundation, the Campo Pianos, the Wences, the guys, you guys are, yeah. you're what the Midwest is all about, right? Why do you think some people are just kind of, they, they get a little bit full of themselves and then the little buddy rolls in, Mark Wentz, you think you show some people up I and mean, your work ethic, like you're saying, I remember you used to get on the bus and you had burns all up and down your arm and I, all over your hands. And the yeah. burns were from the glass you were blowing and you'd do it to two, three, four in the morning. Then you'd come get on the bus and we'd go six hours and wrestle the dual meet and you'd make weight. Do you think that is what, you know, your, your uncles, your, your, you know, Ron guy, right? Campo Pianos, the guys, the Wentz's, is, is that what makes you so tough? Uh, definitely. It's in the blood. I think it's Ohio. Uh, a lot of it was from my brother, wanting to be a Marine and pretending I was Vietnamese, like torture. So he'd, he'd made me strong with these torture techniques and mental toughness. Uh, but my uncles taught me hard work, uh, perseverance. I mean, we had any time uh, you're on a roof with them, you're working, you know? So that helped my wrestling, it helped. Uh, and my stepfather, uh, he was probably the most in influential of my worth ethic. Uh, he married my mom young, took on two kids who just lost their father. He was a painter. Uh, so it took a while for him to really get established. So I was more like the orphan wrestler. Like once I hit my 16 and got my license, that day I drove to Longwood, open that. You know, then I'd be driving to Walsh. I was kind of all over the place. I put myself in everybody's room. I go to Coventry. Uh, but my father, stepfather taught me uh, painting and tile and all the stuff that prepared me to be a sculptor. And he taught me accountability, uh, like painting. You can't hack it up and they're not, they're not gonna pay, you know? Cause they could probably do it. You do a crappy job. So it was a lot of accountability and uh, I've never, there isn't a project that I've started that I've bailed on, you know? I, you know, even by losing money, uh, but they, I was like their farm boy over there at the Camp of Pianos. I remember I fell off a roof because Hicken threw a two by four up. He worked one day. I don't know if you remember Jeff Hicken. Mm -hmm. He was a state champ for Roosevelt. Yeah, he was a killer. He, uh, he upset Brad Clement, I think. So uh, that was kind of where my roots started. Uh, Ken had a good JV, uh, good youth program. And uh, Mark Dennis was another influential person. Who, if I had him more through my career or even had him now, uh, I would always be winning. He was the mental guy that knew how to push my buttons. 
because I was a lot of mental. I overthink stuff. I still do. My wife tells me to quit thinking. Uh, so, yeah, it's just the work ethic and, uh, you know, finishing jobs to get paid. And, you know, my stepdad, he didn't have money to send me to Walsh or, you know, uh, but he didn't miss one match. He was there in his painting clothes. My uncles, they were there in their roof and shoes. They, they were at every match. Um, Uncle George, I remember at the Kenston tournament, I had a way out or something, a pound over. He's dragging me through. Uh, they're pretty crazy guys. I think one of them uh, broke their wrist, 1997 state finals in the hotel room wrestling in front of Heskett or something. They would wrestle each other and get all crazy. And, uh, <laughs> okay, so who took you? I was t hanging out with George this summer. I went down and saw him. And because George and Rick, they're twins, your mom's younger baby brothers. Yeah. How, I think she's six or seven years older than him, isn't she? Maybe a, they were like, oops. Uh, <laughs> it's so, they she's had, like seven, eight years older than him, something like that, right? Yeah, eight. eight okay. Okay. So he started, George started telling me Maple Heights stories. They were, they hung out with the Milkoviches. My mom they was used their to babysitter. Drive. Yes. What? They used to yeah. drive. You, he would go with the Milkoviches to watch Tom and Pat Milkovich. He would ride in a road trip with old man Milkovich and they would go to Iowa or go. They went to Iowa once, maybe Oklahoma another time. And he'd go and watch Pat Milkovich win NCAA titles. What and he was young though he was like a, yeah. a middle schooler, and they took him, and he, he so you got roots in the Milkoviches. The, yeah. here, this whole thing's crazy. First thing, your, your your mom's a Maple Heights person. Your mom lived through the dynasty, as did your uncles. They lived through the Milkovich dynasty. Then your your brother in law is a Saint Ed's Chanel guy, right? Yeah, and my father went to Chanel. My real father. Uh, that passed away and he I didn't know that a little bit um, how, okay so how old was your father or how old were you when your father passed away you so, were four and Sean was eight what what was it no I think it was five and or four and six maybe four and six uh yeah so that you know that I actually did my thesis on PTSD uh for children affected and compared it with because a lot of times it's all military and it, it's, but there's a lot of people looked over these ch children have trauma and they're never addressed, you know? So it evolves into more traumatic, you know, dramatic life. And it's a whole thing. Uh, if you don't get it kind of sorted out, it could, it could help you or it could really snowball into something bad. But uh, I was lucky because my, I mean, not really lucky, but uh, my father died save, uh, helping somebody, so I always looked at him as a hero, good Samaritan, and it was something that held me accountable. Uh, you know, I always felt he was watching me, so I always wanted to make him proud. So, And you and Sean were there. You, your mom, and Sean were there. Wasn't it on the roadside? Yeah, we. I think we were coming back from my cousin's christening or something. Uh, there's a flat tire family, father and mother and a child. And the mother and child uh, came in the car and my dad uh, and the other guy were out there fixing and a drunk driver. He was on, uh, what's that road there in Twinsburg? 461, 261 or 480? 480. 480. 14 and 480 become, are like one there. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, it was pretty hard. Uh, my mother, for her to see that and uh, live through that. I mean, she's a special person. It's made her strong. But uh, I still remember it. They say, you know, I was too young, but you'll never forget stuff like that. But uh, for me, it's helped me. You know, I was fortunate to get a stepfather who might have been better than my real father, at, like teaching me how to hunt, teaching me how to build stuff. Uh, so 
So I, I, I got lucky there because uh, you could kind of get short end of the deal when you're dealing with father-in-law or uh, stepfather. But uh, my mother was, she got married soon after just because it was a lot for two kids and he was a younger guy and we loved him. He'd wrestle with us and take us to work and he had me hunting. I killed my first deer, probably nine years old. Wow. I just had some venison tonight. My wife, she's like a chef. She, whatever I bring, she makes it like top notch, five star. You're, okay, so who took you to your first wrestling practice? Was it the Campos or was it Ron Guy? Uh, I think maybe my brother, Sean. Sean took you? Hmm. And what's Sean your age difference what? between you and Sean? Two years or three? Two. Two. But three okay. years uh, academically. Okay, three years academically, but two age-wise. Okay, so Sean got you into the sport of wrestling. And I know the Campos were really into it. So they might have been the ones who got Sean into it. Because they're yeah, maple height. Yeah, I mean they even they were trying to get us to go to Maple. Uh, you know, it was kind of crazy high school where I was gonna go, where I ended up. Uh, the legacy wasn't it was still good with Man Australia and stuff. Uh, man, remembering all these names. It's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy. Yeah, it's great too, and how many good people you meet and uh, it's all about your connections. I've it's noticed wild. Yeah, if I let things, it's all about keeping good connections. All the stuff I've done is because of that. But so, yeah, it's probably the Milkoviches. Uh, it was just my father being a wrestler. And, you know, I saw Sean was kind of, he was like the Rocky or the Rudy. His technique was a little rough, but if you could beat him by 10 points, but it looked like that guy lost, you know. So he knew he wrestled Sean. Uh, he would rally your brain and What's a five foot tall Italian dude going to do? What's a, what sports is a five foot tall Italian yeah. guy going to do? Jockey, maybe. <laughs> I didn't say that. You said that. But if you think about it, it's I'm not like you're heavy for a jockey. <laughs> yeah. You guys, yeah. You guys are too diesel. You're too, you're too squatty. There's too much muscle on the, on the diesel. Bone. So crazy. But like when Sean, cause Sean was a state placer. Didn't Roosevelt take like third in the state when he was a senior? Sean Something took crazy. third. Sean took third, right? Yeah, and the Sean, team was third. I think Sean the team was ranked was third. like not even ranked. All right. But he uh, almost upset Jesse Denholm in the flip the hog. Uh, but Jesse got him. But he was just, you know, uh, went into states as that wild card and uh, beat a few good guys and ended up, you know, we were always good about. Uh, making the podium third was even better than first for us a lot of times so uh, but I took Sean and uh, I got lucky I was second generation so my I got it's kind of you know maybe like Romano I'm real anal when it comes to overthinking and preparing and you know uh, I don't know where I was going with that but I was more technical and I got to dive in at a younger age and uh, I just put myself everywhere, you know, Longwood, Walsh. I wrestled with all the legends. Like, right. That, 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 that time. And yeah, that you era. were in, you were in with the great Walsh teams. 97 was the greatest Walsh team ever. They had six state champs. Nate Doherty was a finalist with a, with a 500 record. I mean, if you look at what the era you were in, it was crazy. Okay. So George then talked about your state final where you wrestled Roble. Um, what was your record against Roble throughout the year and throughout your career? How many times did you and Phil Roble wrestled and what was your record against him prior to the state finals? Uh, stats a little rough, but uh, I think I, I might, did you beat him at the district? Did you beat him at the district? I beat him pretty solidly at the district. I think we we definitely wrestled in the room multiple times, you know, before that. Solon. Um, so we knew who we were. were. Um, he, it was, luckily he beat me. Uh, it was a boring match. Uh, 
I kind of let it slip away. But uh, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have kept on going for college and made it through five years of that. I was, I think, one or two guys left from 20 guys from our recruiting class. And he was uh, in that recruiting class. You guys were on the so same we, college team. How many times did you wrestle off? You guys probably had to wrestle off a bunch. Yeah, we wrestled off probably 50 times. Uh, did he ever beat you in a wrestle off? No. But he beat you in the state finals. Well, him and his team, uh, I always say Anthony, you know, helped him beat me because it's real technical. Anthony it shut down my funk. Uh was What's Anthony it? the weight above? He was yeah. the weight above then. So it was Mark Wentz versus Phil Roble. And then who did uh, Anthony? Forward, then... No, I think Clark forward versus uh, someone else. Clark forward bumped up because I beat him at the top gun. You beat Clark forward? Yeah, it was the last high Little school. buddy's kid got some wins over here, Jared. Did you hear yeah, that? Yeah, I remember that. Clark I was there. Forward. I was, was the there. Real deal. Yeah, yeah I, it wasn't a big victory. It was like 3 1. Went 3 1. I got a last second uh you know one of my funk moves but wasn't it a, wasn't a, like a three to one match wasn't it like low score yeah it was, it was yeah it was low score i was there yeah uh, yeah he was that kid Clark he got real deal dude mm -hmm. yeah so he bumped up uh and then I, I anthony was, was 30 and, was anthony yeah. 30 so ralph was 130 you were 19 wrestled, he wrestled jeff blanton from st mary's in the semis i believe oh did he because yeah. Ralph, Ralph, Ralph was a champ as a freshman. Yeah. Anthony Ralph was a, a champ, state champ as a freshman and a senior. Is that right? No, I think it was junior, senior. I'm pretty sure. He was a three time champ. No, two. I think it was junior and senior. I don't think he went. Oh, he was a runner up as a freshman. Runner up a freshman. Runner up as a freshman. That's what it was. So, yeah, he's a legend. Um, he's a coach at Ohio State. You know that, right? Yeah. He, Anthony Ralph's the greatest recruiter there is in, in college wrestling. Did you know that? Yeah, I imagine. These are real things. I'm not he's making them best, up. He's one of my best coaches, non-coaches I've had. Uh, he was my drill partner for two years. Uh, he he made me who I was in college. Uh, but he gave he gave no Phil Robel the keys to the car against you is what you're telling. Yeah, but Phil Robel was diesel and uh, he had big I, Joey D gorilla oh, arms. Yeah. Yeah. Joey D had these big gorilla arms. He, I think he probably gave me a concussion in the first 30 seconds. Like he his snap down was intense. And I was on my toes and I had a bunch of recruiters and it was a little pressure and my streets broke. everybody, you know, I was 37 and oh, I already beat so him. So you were undefeated. You beat and him so, all year. Time out. They beat St. Mary's and right. You guys took first. We were. We about we, one by one point. dude. Yeah. So we, we you were, guys beat St. Mary's for the state. We goals? took third. No state title. State oh, title. oh yeah. You guys won it. Yeah, Only they won it. The we Rockets, the third. 97 Streetsboro Rockets were We were closer team. to winning it that year than my other two years. We took runner-up. They beat us. Wow. And, and I, I almost lost it for us. We won by one point. I had two tech ball or two pins and a tech ball. Uh, so I had a lot of points. Uh, Robo Butch, just – it's yeah. hard to beat people three times. I it's real think. hard. You know? uh, and he was top of the line. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, that he's weight good. class. That hey, weight he's class my neighbor. He lives too. out here. That weight class was stacked. Wasn't yeah, it? every weight class that yeah. I've been ever been in is always. Stacked. That was the glory days, guys. You're it talking about good. glory days, Division Three, yeah. when it was really good. Robo lives out. He think he lives out like Manoa. Yeah, he lives out in like Portage County, but uh, he's yeah. a good guy. I see him yeah. at wrestling stuff. He's a quiet guy, nice guy. So, but Mark, no, hold well, on. I'll tell him. I'm gonna tell him next time. I'm gonna say, hey, Mark Wentz. A lot of his success, he just has to thank you. You, you tuned him up in that state final, and he, it got him right, and it, it, it drove him. So, I'll another to, fun fact him. is he was he went to prom with Nicole, your who wife. Won in the, who won in the long run? Like, uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> little buddy, dropping knowledge bomb. Oh, little That's buddy, awesome. <laughs> and I met her at freaking Cedar Point. Sure. And I didn't even know she was there with Phil, and I was like, you know, yeah, let's let's hard, talk. But we, we actually had, I think it was a week after the state champions, we had a rematch in the Solon uh, open gym. So we were cool, and we never had problems. I never, I was glad he won it. He put a lot into it. Uh, sometimes, you know, maybe sometimes I, crap let's, don't go the way you want, right? Yeah, it is, but. You know, you can't, it's not always perfect, you know. Like so the coach. guy who beat you in the state finals, did 
dates this girl, you see her, you're like, man, I, I like that. That she's nice. That's nice. Well, I didn't, and now I it's your wife, mother of two. So in the end, I'm going to give one. I'll give you, I'll, it's going to be two, one Mark Wentz. Yeah. The Robo's a good guy. He's a nice guy. Yeah, he's Quiet a guy, super nice good guy. guy. Yeah. Good he family. Was so strong. And he just, he was well coached. Uh, yeah. uh, what's the coaches there? Grand Kako. Kako. Yeah. I mean, they're amazing. Yeah. They know what they're they doing. They just shut well, me down. They just then... leveled that school, by the way. That school is not a, it's not a, it doesn't exist anymore. Chanel, St. Peter Chanel, not a place anymore, Mark Wentz. Well, that's where, yeah, that's sad because Derek went there, Firebird. No, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Which Your brother. Derek is my brother in law, you mentioned. Mm. And uh, he's another reason where, you know, he lived as a kid, watched me win and lose, and traveled with Nicole to the max. And so he's like my therapist, really. Like, uh, he helped me through grad school. I could talk to him about geek out and wrestling. A lot of people you can't talk to wrestling, you know. Uh, so he's my main guy when it comes to motivation and just like confidence. Uh, he's got his stuff together. He's got a family, two kids. He's just nice. got a real good job. He was a killer on the mat, but uh, he had back injuries. Didn't he? A lot of back injuries. Yeah, he he used to have a back brace that was bigger than his whole back waddle up to the mat take it off and then roll on the mat yeah he, was he was wild. Three, uh, two three-time placer even yeah. with like a broken back wow. wow and he went to ads and he went to uh chanel hey let's talk about your real guy your real guy your bond that you're ever you know forever your bond will be with sean wentz corporal wentz uh they call him the sarge out in colorado if you didn't know I gotta yeah. tell you, the, I gotta tell you the the hiking story in Rocky Mountain National Park where I I I lied to him pretty bad, but I'll tell that. But talk talk about your bond with with Sean Wentz and and why your brother, you know, two years apart. Why why is your guys' bond so special? Well, I think because we went through that trauma together. Um, so I used him as a father figure, and you know, uh, he was pretty rough as a child kind of depressed uh you know but he was a go-getter but he he didn't like me much him and his friends would beat me up uh but i always wanted to impress him you know i would never give up just i'd just get tortured so i could spend more time with him but him going away uh he was on a ship during that match in states i think he was in my corner uh you know, I'm kind of a mental guy. Sometimes I need just, you can do it. Uh, but like I said before, everything's, you try your hardest to make it what you want, but the world sometimes is just going to, like me getting hit by a car. I blew glass and kept going because I, I worked so hard to put myself through college. And I just thought it would be a waste. Like my parents didn't pay for college. I paid for it with my sweat and tears, you know. So I figured it would be a waste to do all that work, come up a little short, and then not do what I went to school for. So that was a big reason, too, uh, I've been. But I realized glass blowing is kind of like wrestling. It's real physical. It's kind of luck if you get found. Uh, so I've used it as a tool to make people remember me and uh, – you know, make stuff that lasts a lifetime. But uh, Sean, he's like my therapist pep talk guy too. I talk to him, you know, sometimes every day, sometimes I won't hear from him for a month. Uh, for a while, he'd be, he'd call me and he'd be like, oh my God, there's a bear. And then the phone would shut out and he'd be camping in the woods. And I'm like, I wouldn't hear from him for three or four days. And I'm like, the guy get eaten by a bear or like what went on he was living in his trailer in colorado you know right when he moved out there right he lived in a trailer he moved out there it wasn't a trailer it was like a landscape trailer yeah yeah oh my god and one day i think uh someone saw all his side of his trailer and stole his bed and uh, <laughs> uh okay so here let me let me i'm gonna give you a couple went stories here and I'll, you can you can either just be a spectator and enjoy, or you could you can uh, you know interject where you see fit. So um, 
August 1998. I never visited Kent State. I just showed up, right? So I remember showing up. I didn't know anybody, right? I didn't know anybody. And I remember seeing this guy wearing like just the shortest shorts I've ever seen a, a, a man run around in or like a guy, like a, like a 20 something. And I, I see him and you guys are running sprints up the steps by McGilvery hall, which is over by your house. And I didn't know who you guys were. And I'm like, who is this guy? And he had this bit, your brother had thick legs. Yeah. He still has pretty thick legs. And he was wearing those green Marine PT shorts. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they were super short. And I'm like, who are these? I'm like, first off, I thought you guys were like, uh, I thought you were um, little people. I didn't know. I was like, are they little? I'm like, what's going on? No, I was like, I didn't know what was going on. So then I figured out that you're my teammates. And I remember they're like, oh, we're going to go to Wentz house. We're going to go to Wentz house. And I'm like, oh, let's go to Wentz house. So I remembered you from the state tournament and stuff like that. And I got hosted on a visit at Ohio U by Chuck. Was it Chuck Garrick? Yeah, that was my, Chuck, my yeah, main Chuck man. Chuck went to OU, right? So Chuck was at OU, and I think he said some stuff about you guys. Oh, they're crazy. And I remember going to your house for the first time, and Sean – well, not first time. I remember the first, like, real party we went to at your house. Sean was like a like a, like a a Tupper babe or like a, like a 60s, 50s diner lady, and he had his hair. I thought it was a wig. It was his hair. Do you oh, remember yeah. he like let his hair get really long yeah. right out of the Marines? He came, yeah, he came back hippie and yes. And I'm like, who, who are these guys? And then obviously you guys owning the house was a whirlwind for however long that was. Oh geez. Second, okay. So so yeah, you guys were I was like, who are these guys? Who are these like little guys running around the campus? And then you were totally different because your your skin's like way darker. Your skin, and you were tan, and you didn't have a yeah. shirt on, and you didn't. You, I could tell you were of the same genetic makeup, but I'm like, why is the one so much darker than the other? And the other one's got a horrible head of hair. So then I'm like, so, what? Who are these guys? Sicily and uh, yeah, Northern. Yeah, I think you had to talk about that. Yeah, there's a difference. So yep. We have listen, Charlie Agazino schooled us up on it. Trust me, we know now. We know he told us the difference between Sicily and Italy. Trust me. We got schooled up on it pretty good, didn't we, Jared? Yes, sir. Okay, next one. Last, so it would have been June 2019, so last year, right? June 2019, so a year and a half ago almost. Um, I went out there and I worked at Air Force and did some stuff with this Mile High Wrestling Club. I went to Northern University of Northern Colorado. And then Sean's like, come on out. Come on and see Grand Lake. And everybody's like, yeah, you got to go out to Grand Lake. And you got to understand it's, it's, it's August or uh, June 24th. You following me? June 24th. You're hearing my words, right? Yeah. So I'm actually out in, not in the mountains. Cause like Eastern Colorado is just plains. It's not mountains at all. Yeah. So I remember I'm supposed to be going up to this wrestling club and all of a sudden I'm in this like little tiny car, right? Like the thing right below, right above a smart car. Chevy something, whatever, whatever Chevy's tiniest car is. I had it. So I'm driving and then like, it shows that there's a bunch of traffic. Well, it's not traffic. It's a, it's six inches of snow dumped. Right. So this is out in the plains. What do you think it was like at Sean's house? Yeah. Dude, I get out there and there's a bunch of snowstorms. And the morning we went out. So I lied to him pretty bad. I was like, oh, yes, it's like a 10 or 11 mile hike. It was a 15 mile hike. And he hasn't done much since he had his surgery. So you know how big buddy gets <laughs> for once he gets, he gets a little irritated when he wants to be done with something. Oh yeah. When he makes so it, I had mind, to huh? verbally abuse him and get him up the mountain. Really? Oh, uh, it's change. Huh? What'd you say? Uh, Did you start? Uh, his can I, 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 I don't think I can put it on the air. I was just like, yeah. You're not used to people pushing back against you, are you? Are, are you, Sarge? I was just like giving him the business. I'm like, oh, you're the tough guy when you need to be the tough guy. I go, and then he, you know, just, I think I threatened to beat him up a couple of times. But this is a year and a half ago. And he, then at the end of it, he was cool. He's like, oh, I'm glad we did this. And we gained about 4,000 feet of elevation, 3,000 feet of elevation. And it was a, it was about a 15 mile round trip. We went to Lone Pine Lake and then Little Past. 
So it was about 15. And then I tracked it and it was more than that. And I was like, oh. And he's like, why would you do that? He goes, I have a, I, I haven't done much since I had open heart surgery. And I'm like, dude, you got to get over that. Which he does. He's got to get over that. I mean, he's the guy always pushing everybody. He needs to be pushed a little bit. Yeah, he does. And there's more anxiety, I think, because uh, you could hear it. Uh, children, like, for some reason, can hear it ticking. It's like robo. Uh, but I think anxiety, uh, he's just a little nervous. Uh, but I had to verbalize. The doctor it. said he's like, my heart's going to blow before his. Like, it's, yes. it's like my neck. Like, my whole body get hit by a car. The neck's still, the neck's still good. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's so. what's crazy. I was just like, Sean. I like at one point I was like, dude, you got to just shut up and just get the hike done. And he was just like, you know, he goes, he gets like kind of bummed out. Yeah. But uh, he got Maybe. through it and, and we made it up the mountain, but he was just like super bummed out. And man, go out there and hike if you ever get a chance. But I, I know he's like transient at the moment and <laughs> in yeah, the uh, domiciles. That place was cool. That uh, A-frame house. I stayed up in that loft. So he just sold it. Yeah. Yeah. He just sold it. Him and Ronnie, right? Yeah, me and uh, Chloe made a trip out there, uh, COVID, kind of in the middle when it was slowed down. Uh, we spent some time and we stayed at uh, Grand Lake on one of those islands. It's really cool, man. And uh, we went, uh, my daughter's really good at uh, the long uh, compound bow. I've been training her since she was probably four to shoot the bow. And she can beat me on the, uh, sometimes. But uh, awesome. we went on like one of those. Uh, ski hills but you walk it upward and you shoot uh targets deer and stuff but it's pretty awesome but of course we had no food and chloe was hungry and <laughs> she was a survivor she gets taken care of uh i told her you know she comes with us wentz brothers she's gonna learn how to survive because my wife uh she makes it pretty good for all of us Hey, Mark, what is Amarico? Why do you go with Amarico? Why don't you go with Mark Wentz glass or Mark Wentz sculpting or Wentz this, Wentz that? So what is Amarico? And what's the significance of Amarico? And, and how do people get in touch with you if they want to commission art through through Mark Wentz and Ab Amarico Designs, fabrications and design? Yeah. Uh, so Amarico is like a third, fourth generation from the Campo Piano side. So uh, Uncle Rick is actually Amarico the second, and his son, little Ricky, who runs uh, him and Kevin, kind of the main people at Campo Piano Roofing over there. It's actually just Campo Roofing. I thought it was Campo. Yeah. Campo. Yeah. You know that, right? It's stuff, not Campo friend. Piano. It's Campo. Yeah. They always correct me, but. Uh, <laughs> How I do we get a hold? Okay. So, so they're Amarico, your, your, your cousin's Amarico, your, your. Your uh, uncle's Amarico, your grandpa's Amarico. Your, your middle name is Amarico, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm named after my father, but he didn't want to be a junior or senior. So my mom was like, well, he's going to be Amarico because that's my dad's name. So, so it's your middle lucky. name, essentially. It's your middle exactly. name through the Campo Campo Pia. Yeah, middle name. And it rings good with Amarico glass. And uh, it's first on the, the list. Uh, but uh, it's just a little Mark Wentz. It just doesn't have the ring, but no, you're, now, yeah, you're right. Amarico, uh, and there's times, like when I went to Texas in Blue Glass, the lady didn't want me to go by Mark. She wanted everybody to think I was from Italy and only referred to me as Amarico, and she really sold a lot of more glass. That, that, was, your er <laughs> that was your early days, right? That was like after Sandusky and... Uh, yeah, yeah, so Cedar tell them yeah. some of the Sandusky stuff. So it's marketing, essentially. It's marketing. Zeb, you got to hear some of the Sandusky stories. You haven't heard any of these yet, I don't think. Okay, hold on, hold on. Before yeah. Sandusky stories, yeah. how do people get a hold of Mark Wentz? I know Justin Knoll. I saw some pictures yeah, on his Instagram. So. You just built him like a chandelier light fixture. Oh, That's really? amazing his, that his you had to wife, ship. Yeah, I was kind of... That one was a little tough because I've done a lot of lights, but the first time I make anything, that one I actually want to reproduce. I'm trying to get some more products because... Uh, it's really hard. Everything I do, it's so hard. I like, it's like cutting weight. You never want to do that again. Like, <laughs> How do people get in contact with you? What is your Instagram, Instagram, so, Twitter, you to, Facebook? Right? How do people get a hold of you to have you commission art and, and make yeah. your amazing artwork? So at Amarico Glass is my Instagram. And that's where I get a lot of my work. 
uh, when I'm slow on my story, you know, my calls are slow. So keeping people uh, fresh, like, oh, he could do that too. I need one of those, you know? Uh, and I always tell people I make anything from about 50 bucks to a million bucks. I haven't got to the million yet. Uh, I have a couple but you big, can, right? but uh, you know, I'm just waiting for LeBron to call me to make something for his uh, new complex or I'm trying to get into the wrestling community. I, uh, my goal is to make art for sports, uh, more stadiums, you know, right now it's a little tough, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I like to give everybody the even the normal, you know, I like celebrities and uh, developers and hospitals is a big one. Uh, but I love making a, you know, something small, like for somebody, you know, it gives them joy, you know. Um, so, yeah. Well, wood, metal and glass, right? That That's your specialties, right? Wood, metal. Yeah, I've been blowing glass now. I, I kind of wanted to get that back it's more of like training uh it's like a workout i do it more for therapy and i just uh you know it took me 10 years to come back around and figure out how to build a mobile studio so i'm doing demos for some of these restaurants and stuff uh kind of like i did at cedar point i'm re revamping that uh but i mostly use the glass just to uh spread the word and get people excited uh I, you know what? I have something that um, if I bring it out, it's right behind me through this wall, literally sitting on the top of a refrigerator in my garage. I might go grab it and show it to you real quick. And you can tell me Wonder if, if I you remember making this. Go get it. I used to, but I've made so much now. But uh, Oh, this is one of the first. I think this is literally the first bust you've ever made. I have it. No You're way. trying to it's throw it away. Gold hat, gold I have it. I have it. I'm going to go get it. I have it. I'm going to go get it right now. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. I'm going to go get it right now. Go get it. Go get it. Yeah, I think that was the first one I did. I can't believe that's still intact, man. Yeah, I told you, I, uh, my parents still have the pumpkins and the ornaments you did, the tree ornaments, the bowl, the, the floppy brown bowl. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, your mom. Your mom's a big reason why I think uh, she's like, quit being an idiot and like, feel the deal with Nicole. Right. Uh, I remember that conversation. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, don't you like it? Cause you're like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, I didn't <laughs> want to drag like... her. Yeah. I don't want her. She was a good girl. I don't want her to have to suffer. Right. But, uh, wow. wow. Throwback. Yeah. I remember that new. Uh, Wasn't wow. it in the corner of the dining room or where'd you keep it? Wow. That's really like good in condition. How, I thought that was lost in college. That was an African uh, guy whose model they get paid, you know, some of the college students mm -hmm. like nude models and stuff. Uh, luckily, what do you think of this one, epic. little buddy? That's epic, dude. I cannot <laughs> believe that you have that. Hey, maybe save that for your kids. Uh, do you understand? On eBay or something. Do you understand that I have moved? That thing's from, heavy, too. It's really heavy. I have moved. So listen, this might actually go. Uh, you love it, don't you? You remember it too, don't you? Dude, I remember, yeah, sculpting and. Dude, uh, this is one of your first pieces ever. This is one of your early pieces. One. Ah. It was the first uh, uh, head I did, I think. It's yes. It's not easy. It was like a three part mold. Yes, I have this. Dude. I mean, if you want this back, you can have it, man. I, I'm not going to do that. I have some of your. I've got a couple glasses here. I, no, mean, I want other people to have it. You kept you it. love it. I would already love sold it. it you for love 20. that I have this stuff. It'd probably oh, be I broken if you had it, Zeb. Yeah, I would either. I got a liquid date. Uh, either this my was wife on the curb. Wall, this was on uh, the curb. I took this off the curb yeah. on Willow Street. That's how I got this. Yeah, see, that was a find. And I'm glad you saved it because there's so many pieces that I've. I had to throw away just to move to the next piece or, you know, glass. I go through, you know, it's heavy. <laughs> Maybe this should heavy. go in the back of my podcast. Maybe I should have great hey, idea. Billy Dickerson where I'm at right now, the space I'm in right now, Sean, or I'm sorry, Mark, the space I'm in right now, Billy Dickerson's building me a studio in here. Billy, your neighbor, so Billy, my neighbor and Ken. Up with, 
he was my neighbor. I dated. Yeah. Him, yes. Me and Sean dated both his sisters. Yes. Simultaneously, yes. all through college. His beautiful sisters that are still beautiful, by the way. Yeah. Um, Billy's awesome, but Billy is actually building me a room where I'm sitting, and I'm like behind a couch. I'm in this like back back room we have, and I don't have. I mean, I got the flag. Yeah, I, think up I even... saw. I always see. Yeah, you kind of mentioned him. He. Uh, he's the dozer. Good. He's my guy. Real. Yeah, he's a real craftsman, and uh, yeah, he does a good job. Billy does a good job, but um. Maybe I'll have him build me something in my room. Dude, That's, this is really cool, Mark. This is a really be, neat yeah. thing. I knew you'd remember it. I knew you'd remember it, and you did immediately, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I most of the some of the glass I forget, but the sculptures, it's like wrestling matches. Like, you know, it's a timeline of my history. You know? It's so awesome. It's a part of your life and your story. Let me put this down so I can finish this. Oh, it's a little heavy. <laughs> it's getting a little. It's it's actually pretty heavy too. Wow. So yeah. So I have uh, Shaq sign this welding mask. Is that that signature? Oh, cool. You want to see it? Yeah. Uh, what else? Course, yeah. Yeah. Of course we do. Nice. So. It's Did you, were you wearing it when you signed it? Did you just like sign it right on top of your head? Yeah. Yeah, of course he did. That's the that's the ambiance of the that's why um, that thing matters. So I had to retire this one. Hey, Here's Mark. my uh, 2020 new Christmas mugs. I started. Nice. It's been 20 years since I made mugs. That's awesome. How much is a mug like that, Mark? Mark, when we're talking product, how much is a yeah. mug like that? Uh, it depends who you talk to, me or my CEO. Uh, Nicole, <laughs> I give them away because it makes you. Remember. Oh my God! But, Stop uh, doing that! Stop I saw it! I'm at the brewery, a high-end brewery for sixty-five bucks. It sounds like a lot. You just had a brewery project, right? So sixty-five for that at the brewery, right? Yeah, out the door. Buy a couple fifty. You know, people to take orders. Uh, I'd try to. You do different them. colors, the whole whole I, thing, right? I want to start a more product now that I got everything figured out. So, uh, you know, I would. I want to get into wrestling again and start doing logos. I just got this crazy CNC plasma cutter and I'm going to start cutting uh, mostly for my sculpture, but I'm going to do signs and stuff. I'd like to tap back into the, maybe Zeb can help me market some of the. I'm not scared. Maybe I'll make a trip down, man. I get down to Georgia every day. I need now to again. come down here. I need to take you uh, to the rivers. I'm in. People. If I can get in, I'll get in. I don't know about I don't know about go, going out and uh, spearing sharks or anything like that. But uh, what's the fish flounder. you normally spear? So flounder, flounder. and uh, it's kind of a crazy thing, but it's one of those things I feel gifted and blessed that I get a chance to live on an island. And I felt yeah. like uh, you know kind of lazy just sitting at home when I know there's bountiful fish that you can just float down the river and fill up your cooler. Uh, you, you got to find them and you got to, it took me a year to make it a hundred yards away from the dock. Uh, just cause it's kind of eerie. You're in shallow water, you're right around the banks, but uh, you light off the water. So you look for the eyes. It's more like bow hunting. So you're looking for the flat fish. And I mean, I've get, I got doormats, they call them. I'll feed 10 people. I'll get one and I'll call 10 of our buddies and we'll have a fish fry. I'll feed all 10 of them. Is that what was on that uh, that surfboard that you sent? Was that what those were? Yeah, those are flounder. So they're like camouflage. They're a flat fish, uh, but it's one of the best eating. It's a light fish. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But I haven't done so much in my neck. Uh, but I, I'm kind of the guy, like old men usually use a rowboat, and it's kind of simple and safe. Uh, I decided I didn't have a boat, so I was going to make it happen on my paddleboard. And it actually, I can sneak back in. These guys would be going out on these fifty thousand dollar boats. I'd come in with this little paddleboard and have ten fish, and they'd be like, "What the heck?" Uh, hey, Mark, so, you ever get to uh, toss anybody on their dome? And uh, does anybody ever challenge you on any of the shows? Uh, yeah. Come on, let's go. It's a podcast. We're here to tell stories. What are you doing? Who did you dome up? Who got domed? Who got lat dropped? Who got headlocked? What, what move, right? Little buddy put down on, put down. What was your setup? Yeah, what was your setup? 
So these shows are like going into the wrestling room and most people like me, the girls like me, the designer guys like me, but the other guys, you know, they're like that, you know. They feel threatened, right? There's Mark, you know, all blow glass and concrete and all this. So um, I have a four second rule. Like if you, you know, I'd like hugs and all that, but if you, you pass the four or five seconds, you're gonna get, you know, I'll put the clinch on you and let you know. Most people have no idea. And a lot of times they just can't believe it. And they just want to see, like, it's like seeing a comet or something. Like uh, a little guy take out some giant, you know? And uh, I'm not fighting. You know, I do state qualifiers from Georgia. You know, they just, they think, they don't, you know, until you touch a college trained wrestler, you really don't know. Uh, it's just ingrained. So, but people talk shit, to, you know. And, Who got uh, thrown on their dome and on HT, HGTV on the set? So I got to know. Uh, Chip Wade, uh, he's a big, he was a cheerleader for Georgia Tech. So we had a bout in this dungeon. We were doing this house and uh, I got, the guy was from Ohio and he had a wrestling mat in his basement. And Chip Wade, he's like specimen, you know, 220, all jacked up. He was a cheerleader. He still throws his wife up. And, uh, so all the guys, you know, people kind of set it up. It was a more friendly bout. But uh, I won the battle definitely for sure. But he won the war because the guy was a tank. He was, you know, trying to headlock me, rip my head off. I just kind of. I let them tire themselves out and then I slowly subdue them, you know, with a choke or an arm bar. Uh, he's 70 pounds bigger than you. Yeah, he might be too, you know, he slimmed up, but uh, he's real into working out. But I try not to do that. I keep telling people I got one or two chokes left and that's, I'm saving that for the high school kid that's messing with my daughter. <laughs> you know? but I'll tell you what. You might want to save some because how old's your daughter? She's nine and oh, uh, in about four or five years, you're gonna need some yes, little buddy chokes. Save to them tricks. Out. But she's been uh, well trained. Uh, she's not really a wrestler, but if you get her mad, she'll throw me an arm bar. Or, like it naturally comes out. The little one, three year old, she's gonna be uh, like Ronda Rousey. I mean, this chick's into fighting and technique and but there's numerous shows i mean there's numerous times i was just on a real big show i'd like to mention this might be my big debut you, you never know what they're gonna edit but uh, i got to work with some awesome people and uh i think i took three people out on that show it was more they were younger big wait is this after neck surgery after i actually what are you have, doing man what are you doing I actually. Uh, what are you, 41 or 42? What are you doing? How old are you? 42? I'll be 43 uh, New Year's. You're 42, you'll be 43. What are you doing, man? No, I'm, I work smarter. I let them, I just kind of move around. I actually, my best move is the Charlton. I grab the wrist and I just push them away from me. And, uh, you elbow it's pass. It's an elbow, elbow pass. pass. Yeah, I hated it. Charlton always did it. Uh, but it's the best to deter old drunk people and. Uh, Big, big guys. But big beefy goons. I actually got, after the next surgery, I probably got five more left in me. Uh, before the next surgery, I was on my last leg. But uh, I try, I'm a lover, but uh, I do miss it. You got to watch. Most of my injuries are probably not on the mat. You know, they're probably horsing around with someone bigger. Uh, but yeah, I, I still... You know, I can get you the first time. Usually, you can figure out what I'm going to do and shut me down. But you got to kill me, you know. So what do you go for, the lat drop? What do you go for? Just tire him out, then a lat drop? Or what are you hitting him with? No, I just misdirection. Actually, I hit like a, a Yoshi Akinora move the other day. I'm just, this big guy because he's coming at Like me. a foot sweep? Foot sweep, like a baseball a, bat, arm. Yeah, yeah, just a block. Mm -hmm. I try to let them do all the work, you know. But – uh a lot of times, just like a monkey, I just uh, pass them by and climb up their back and just kind of put them to sleep. They try to power bomb me back, and I can 
<laughs> like Drew did to Sean in the middle of the student center. Dude. Yeah, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got hey, you got any other good ones for us, dude? I love hearing you tell us stories and I, you know, I like talking about your brother because obviously he I'm pretty close with your brother and I like what your brother's doing with the warrior saber and trying to, you know, get uh, veterans of all the armed forces and the coast guard drawn into being productive members of society. But, you know, what's the future hold for, for Mark Wentz and Amerigo? What is the actual name of your, of your actual design company? So my website is Mark Amerigo Wentz.com. So you can see, all the work I've done, all the sculptures, all the HGTV stuff. You can contact me. Um, it's Amerigo t- Fabrication and Design. That's and just design. like my LLC. That they that's what, the but that's what we got to know. That's how people can find you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. What was the null piece, by the way? What did Justin Null have you do, by the way? Uh, so that was just a chandelier. I started blowing glass again, just... Uh, I'm not production glass, but I'm doing, I'm going to start making more lights because uh, lights are coming back. And it was just a rondelle, uh, the plates, I made about 10 plates and uh, just kind of like a chandelier. And uh, she just got me on the story. She sees me blowing glass. And it was Helen, right? Helen, Helen, yeah. Helen reached out? Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah. I, I love it. I love making stuff for people. And uh, I can work within their budget. And uh, a lot of times, you know, I probably give them double their money uh, just because I'm going to go all in. Uh, But materials, you know, I usually work with people and uh, usually gets me more work. Uh, But I love making even small work for people. Uh, So listen, when you make something like that, I don't want to know what they budgeted page it don't care don't care about materials what's it cost to ship something like that jeez uh <laughs> a thousand bucks no 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 nicole has it on lock so uh i think it, you know i don't pay for the shipping i always tell them but i'll get their well yeah you're, you include that in the price and so. i you know i don't go into up i'm a professional packer i learned that in some of my older jobs i you know if i take that into ups they're like this 200 bucks to pack the thing you know so and they pack it half as good as i would so i save money on boxes and i recycle stuff and uh, i think it was 150 bucks oh boxes. that's it yeah it's really you oh, know wow. some I of this see, stuff yeah. i ship uh ground on the pallet so you just get a it could be a thousand skin. pounds, but it's a pallet price or something, you know. Oh wow, that's cool. I didn't see. I didn't know that. I'm, I'm pretty ignorant when it comes to shipping uh, sculptures and artwork. But yeah, I just go take guys... them off my friend's uh, curb. I just yeah. go take them off the curb where my buddies leave them. Well, clearly, well, if you guys want anything, traveling with it, Zeb, you took care of it, right? How crazy is it? I've moved probably ten times since yeah. we were out. Of, you know, from when I took it from the curb from that's your house, at least fifteen years ago, right? 16, yeah. oh, 17, oh, no, no, this was like his freshman or sophomore yeah. year, Mark. Yeah, it had to be sculpture one. So, yes, uh, so this was, it was probably 99, 98, wow. 99. So I've had wow. that thing for 22 years, 21 years, probably. It's a lot invested. Hopefully, I can pan out and it'll pay for your kid's college or something. <laughs> hey, I got a Mark Amarico once. You sign it. Yeah, I got to have, uh, no, that I think that depreciates the value of it. Hey, uh, Sean or Mark, sorry. Do you have um, – how do you sign that piece, the, the, the rim tree at Shaquille O'Neal's house? Where is that signed? Like where, where would we be able to go and like authenticate your work? Where, where do you do that at when you sign something? Well, the big metal sculptures, it, like nothing really works. Sometimes plaques, but then people will steal the plaques and sell it, you know, because uh, it's usually bronze or something. So what I started doing, I actually draw with the welder. You so tack I, it. You tack it in there. Tack, tack, tack. I just tack by signature like I'm drawing with uh, Got it. some kind of pen or something. He but, didn't ask you about that. He wasn't like, oh, why'd you sign it? He was cool about that, right? He didn't, oh, he wanted me to sign it. Yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah. you're going to sign this, right? Uh, so, yeah, I have a couple oh, of good track stories. I, his shoe, shoe room was bigger than my house. 
Uh, I'm guessing a lot of the stuff he has is bigger than all of our houses. Dude, he had. I gotta tell you this. This is the best. So uh, I don't know why I was in his bedroom or something, but I was helping him move something. But uh, so there was this gator in a wrestling stand, a freaking eight foot gator, like this in his in his uh, bedroom or like in the entry to the bedroom. And I'm like, dude, what? what is like why do you have a wrestling stance i like i know you like wrestling but he's like well the taxidermy kind of got fun with it but i was like well what's the story with that why do you have a gator and he's like that thing ate my dog in my house in orlando uh so they hunted it down and kept it now it's in his room at a wrestling stance (laughs) killing the awesome gator in a wrestling stance that ate his dog that he killed and (laughs) I don't know why, why, why? I can imagine why? just said why. I don't, I don't think he did. Maybe the grounds people did, or something, or uh, authorities, or something. But uh, hey, do you want one of these? Not the mug, the uh, sticker. For sure, yeah. Yeah. What do you got? What do you got for? Because we got, because I got, I got Ohio stickers. We got to hook them up go- with Josh. We got to hook them up with Josh. Get yeah, them. we got to get you on Barbary Apparel. Yeah. Ooh, oh, I give. nice. So I got stickers, nice. So yeah, people, I usually give these shirts if you buy a bigger piece. Or do you uh, have a fat person size, double X? Uh, not on hand, but uh, I need to start having them on hand. Fat so people want shirts them. like that too. I know. Uh, I need to make one. I've been making them of every piece, major piece I've done. Oh, that's like. That is uh, awesome. Can, so hold I on. Do. Victory trees. But hold it up. You got he's gotta be let me see. I can't see it. Go ahead. Talk about it, Mark. So this is like the podium you can see, you know, first, second, and third. Uh you can see the middle one isn't the tallest. Uh but a lot of my works reference to uh, the sport, you know, and uh those are on a corner of Atlanta in the most up and coming part of the city uh so they're pretty cool and that was like my victory to say i'm you know i did what i set out to do and uh, i really found what i was good at i never would have thought it you know be 25 foot tall you know um but yeah i just hoping to do more work for hospitals it's different you know what's good is I'm good with adversity. So this COVID and neck, having neck surgery on the same year COVID has definitely made it a little bit tougher, but it was probably a blessing because I would have been climbing up sculptures for two months and I gave it, it gave me time to heal. And- uh, Heal for your next match, right? Yeah. No, I try to- <laughs> So was I that actually your- pretty, pretty good at kind of saying no, but- uh, it's amazing what just you say remember. no, just say no to wrestling, big, beefy, or even smaller just, people that could start. Just, yeah. just, just say why. Just say why. Was that was that was that your first public art then? That that um the trees, the victory trees. Yeah. No, what so yeah, I I didn't really get into that, but uh, you got a lot of public right uh, hospitals. I've been lucky. And, yeah, I think I got uh, six different pieces of all together. There's like eleven sculptures in Atlanta. I think it's the most one artist i don't know but you did the bike the bike uh racks in kent right yeah so i did some of the bike racks a couple of them didn't last uh they lasted a while but uh they got vandalized which they lasted longer than if pegman was in town you know (laughs) Uh, (laughs) the the old blackjack would have done those up pretty good hey uh mark when you make all this like public artwork man it's it's it sounds like it's really what your passion is. It sounds like when they commission you for public artwork, it's really what you're into. Would you, would you, or, or just making work in general? Like what, what, what is, where do you lean? What do you want to do? What's your passion? Uh, you know, I found out quick. I wasn't a production artist making the same painting or making the same cup. I did that in wrestling with burpees and all that. Uh, and I just, saw the bigger picture my construction i i morphed my construction and campo piano and guy and turned it into sculpture you know and that's what's thrived me on these shows so uh you know the goal is to do more public art but me and nicole 
probably apply for 50 to 100. And it, it's like a serious thing. Half of people are like, I want to be like you. I want to be an artist. But they, it, it's like you win in the States. Like they just see that glory. They don't see the hours of cutting weight and all that. Uh, so it's, it's a lot like wrestling. But, uh, you know, the vision is just to kind of stick, grind, keep grinding it out. Each year I get more uh, opportunities and these shows put me on the map and into the right people to be able to make pieces like this. But it is, uh, you know, it's rejection every day. It's, uh, I get pinned every day almost, uh, getting that email back saying there was 500 applicants and you, we like your work, but it doesn't fit this project or, but, uh, we're getting better and the more we apply for and get rejected, the more they'll call me for something else and then they just give it to me because it's more up my alley. And they, uh, I found a way, I mean, you don't know, but uh, public art has been around Italy, you know, it needs to be more in America. They're, they're actually, a lot of my jobs I get are 2%. So 2% of the construction budget, you have to put a sculpture in your development in certain cities so uh i'll have contractors write me a check and they're like because oh, they don't want a piece of art you know they'd rather put another house in or something uh but it's nice for me because it's already established in the budget and uh, i can design i'm getting a chance i've always looked been held back with budget i feel i haven't even touched what i can make and uh you know these hospitals and airports i mean their budget's million two million dollars for these art pieces but uh so you know, you, installation might cost a million you know so do you do mainly work in atlanta or do you travel the country or a little so bit i'm applying for art uh all over zoos you know uh mm -hmm. california airports it's kind of on hold right now because of covid but uh mm -hmm. that's why i'm good at making now i got a chance to make you know i'm I do multiple things to keep us going. So I have my gallery work, which is like that head that would sit on a table. You know, I saw that on artfulhome.com. I have uh, some more sculpture work. Then I do fabrication for the designers, oven hoods, tables. And then my main thing is the public art. So I'm just uh, moving forward and, uh, you know, hoping people connect and uh, give me more um, chance you know but a lot of that's like putting in the hours and just you know a lot of these public arts you know they're 50 60 years old before they you know get the washington monument or something crazy you know mark uh, how do you stay uh you know biggest thing is you're you're one you're one piece of work away from just going global going viral i mean you already have to a degree with the Shaquille O'Neal, uh, you know, rim sculpture, rim tree, I guess. What, what's the actual name of that piece of art at Shaquille's? Uh, hoop tree, I call it. Hoop, hoop tree. So, oh, you know, yeah. essentially with, you're, you're one hoop tree away from being international, global, you know, gold zillionaire, if that's what ends up happening, right? But that's not why you do it. I understand that. We all get that. But how do you stay humble? And how do you how do you continue to be Mark Wentz when that when that moment finally does come and the next hoop tree comes and hits, whether it's LeBron or whoever it is? How do you stay humble? How do you continue to be, you know, little Mick, little buddy? How do you continue to be Amarico? How do you continue to be Mark Wentz? Yeah, I just uh, my wife. We haven't talked much about her, but without her, uh, none of this would happen. So she's like. She's not just my wife, she's my chef, my CEO, my bookkeeper, my secretary, my material picker upper, my nanny, uh, she's my mental coach. I'm asking her questions about steel and stuff she never even heard of, but she just knows it's in my head somewhere and she knows how to get it out. So she's kind of like a wrestling coach. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's emotional, you know, uh, this, this week. I, this lady up the size of the lanterns and it's like scratching my head. A lot of times I'm scratching my head and then I 
overthink it and I build it in, you know, really quick. So just keeping, um, I love meeting people. Uh, these shows are cool because it's like wrestling. I, but then I, I get overwhelmed and I get go back to my little cave here on the island. And uh, You get boggled is what I like to call it. Sometimes uh, you get overwhelmed, but you get boggled. Boggled, yeah. So, That's so, a Sean word, by the way. That's a Sean Wentz word, yeah? Definitely, Sean. So, so yeah, just, uh, you know, keeping it going. And a lot of me is maybe afraid of success, like uh, – you know, I'm one post away from getting, you know, 50 jobs, you know, if I posted something, hey, you, you want a chance to have something for 100 bucks or something like that. Uh, but now I'm just trying to make it easier for my family and my body. Uh, that's why I got this robot to um, start helping me. And uh, I don't know, we'll just see. I'm going to focus more on the shows since they came back around and uh, kind of start doing some real estate again and start using my skills because I do my construction with my art. Uh, now I've been working with some pretty prestigious designers. So, uh, and I made, you know, I was able to be an artist because I built a house when I was 24 and I, Rented a house, you know, I used my scholarship money, the money I saved to go to school. And I used that to buy the house, me and my brother. Uh, he used the GI Bill. He used the GI Bill and I yeah. used to. Uh, it's as blue collar as it gets. It's what stories are about. Yeah. You're taking scholarship money. You're buying a, a wrestling house in, in Ken, Ohio, or you how many people get to get to wrestle in division one college wrestling in the town they grew up with in a quarter mile down the road at the, at a at large international university, like Kent state university. It's like a, you're like, you're saying when these guys say this to you, like, man, we got to do a story on Mark Wentz. Cause it's like a Forrest Gump, crazy story. And it's a, such an unlikely meandering, <laughs> crazy story. Yeah, you, it is. you guys haven't even got, you know, half of the stuff since no, you're, your dad passes away. He's hit by a drunk driver in front of you when you're four years old and your brother and your mom are with you. And it's just like the most unlikely success story. And like a lot of people, they, don't, they just don't get out of that. They don't, they don't go and become a world renowned artist. And I'm just impressed. Well, get a big, big buddy hug. Thank you. Uh, yeah. It makes us tough. I mean, it's the toughness and uh, just to the wrestling mentality. If I, like I said, if I, you know, people say to be meaner or charge more, but if I was mean to this guy or this guy, he wouldn't have called me back. You know, if I would have told him I only work for this much money, you know, he's not going to call me back. So uh, I, I use motivation like we did in wrestling and I use my daily grind is like I, today I was, doing periods i had tough work i had to grind all this metal so i act like it's a wrestling period and I, i'll put a stopwatch to hold me like or i'll put it off forever all day and then i'll end up doing it the last hour of the night so i want to read you a quote all right so i do the edge you know the edge oh, yeah it's howard yeah, ferguson. ferguson yeah so i've lived off that book since i started wrestling and i, I look at it probably every week I get a new quote and it's crazy. This week I got a quote and it happened to be, there's not a lot of artists in that book, but it happened to be Michael Angelo. You want me to read this quote? Yeah. So this is from Michael Angelo. If people knew how hard I worked to gain my mastery, it would not seem so wonderful at all. The greater danger for most of us lies not in setting our aim too high and falling short, but in setting our aim too low and achieving our mark. So, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty nice, huh? That, that's that's good stuff, man. That, I mean, that, uh, that sums it. you up, man. Because I like Zeb talked earlier. You know, you you'd roll in after pulling all nighters, right? And then you got to go wrestle a match. You know, you're like, ah, 
instead of going to work out at the rec, you'd be in front of the fire, right? The kiln sweating, yeah. right? <laughs> How many hundred degrees is it? Whew. Yeah, it's 2,200 inside, but it's Jeez. about, you know, the oven's 900 degrees when I jump in there, uh, put my arms in there. And Dude, it's a little tiny building right by in between mm-hmm. like Michael Schwartz and Bowman Hall and right. the pay lot, right? Yeah, is that they got a tiny new, building. They got a new one, but uh, it definitely. Of course they did. Of course they did. All that hard work, like they wouldn't let me be an architect because they said it was too workload, too much workload and be a wrestler. Right, right. So, but they let me be an artist, which was even more because Twice my college much. professor was didn't really like wrestling and he was always busting my chops like you need was it to... Kurt Mangus or am I making that up oh yeah he's passed away but he's one of my mentor uh, favorite people Kurt Mangus was like he was the on deal. my board right he was, uh, on my final show Kurt Mangus was a big deal I still remember he said uh, I was going to make something someday special uh, so I take those little tidbits and I let them haunt me uh, from people and it's crazy what one word, and I try to do that to kids and people I meet, uh, words of encouragement. Is that when uh, you talk to Corey about the stop signs? <laughs> yeah, that was funny. No, that was me. Uh, someone played a plank on me, and I kind of got a chance to give it back. I don't think Zeb heard that one. Yeah, so uh, one of the best summers of my life, which was one of the toughest, was after Max and... Uh, but uh, it was the best place to kind of recoup and live my dream as an artist. Uh, Jared's family took me in and uh, I got to blow glass, ride my jet ski to work. And was it at Cedar Point? Cedar Point, it took my mind off, uh, you know. He was the wrestling. entertainer. He did a show blowing glass yeah. every day, like multiple every- times a day. You know, he yeah. had to do a show in front of people blowing glass. It was like in the old time section over there. And it was yeah, perfect. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Where Whitewater Falls is. So yeah. all the girls would come dry their shirts on my, in my uh, shop, you know, because they get wet. Uh, so they stand by my fire and they hang out. So it was a good time. But Corey, uh, Corey was my man. Drew was a little crazy at that time. Uh, We'd have to put him in check, but uh, yeah. Drew, a father of four. Father of four drew up for, how about that? That's crazy. He got a lot of antiquings that summer by me and Corey, I think. Uh, (laughs) Is that where you throw the flower on them when they're sleeping? Uh, So I taught him all the tricks, and uh, Julie probably either liked me because I was keeping them busy or adding to the nightmare, but... uh, I love it. He's pretty love- awesome. But uh, yeah, Corey would always talk me in because yeah, I'm like the guy on Austin Powers, Will Ferrell. If you ask me three times, I'll say yes. So he'd ask me, like, let me drive the car. I'm like, nah, I don't think you're fast. And then so I let him drive my little Plymouth laser. I think I painted a house for. Uh, and I didn't have third gear. But I remember uh, someone, my uncle or something, teaching me how to drive and he said you know the stop signs with the white line around it that that means it's optional and so i told that to Corey, and uh i don't know if he remembers it but uh, he does he brought up like when we were up at uh, troy and Sam's. he brought it up somehow you got brought up yeah he still tells that story i love it man little buddy you got anything else for us i make a lot of weapons this is kind no of good way. for barbarian so I'm that's, trying to make yeah. a lot of axes and uh, that's sweet. So I make my own spears to spear the. Fish. Uh, hold on, how much is that thing? I want that thing. That's bad. That's how bad much is, is that functional? You could cut an arm off with it, yeah. No, okay, okay. Can but I no, I don't sharpen that. I don't sharpen it. Uh, no, it's just blunt that you could chop wood. Is all I care about. This is my. Uh, I keep it. For the zombie apocalypse or okay. when I go into Atlanta. How much? But, uh, okay, you I watch way too much one. Walking Dead, buddy. Way too much Walking Dead. Well, how much would that Atlanta? cost? So if someone wanted it, someone's watching. I want that. that. How much? I don't know. What do you think? I don't I mean, know what the going rate CEO. is. You got to ask the CEO. Yeah, I got yeah, to ask the CEO. I'm saying like 100 bucks, right? 100, 150 bucks? Yeah, maybe. 200, 250. Probably 250. custom. 250. At least. At yeah, least. I don't know. We'd have to research online. That's 
I try to get the going rate or a little below. Yeah, but, that's uh, more than 200. That's, yeah, that's a minimum $250 piece. Uh, but now I'm actually going to be making stuff. This is hand forged. Oh, wow. And uh, that's why I want it. Yeah. I want it because I want to hang it on my wall behind me in the podcast. And then if somebody rolls up on me and I got to snatch it off the wall and, you know, yeah. split a you, wig, I can. You need like the uh, double blade one. Like, uh, the oh, arm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like He Man's Battle Axe. <laughs> yeah. So I'll make you one of them. So I'm actually, now that I have the CNC, I'll be making multiple. I, but I don't them. want a CNC one. I want a little buddy hand forged one. Well, we could give you. I just have to buy that one. This one, I'll just I'm gonna buy that. I'll buy that. I'll, I'll just buy that one. How about you come down and uh, or I'll come to you and we'll forge it in you. I do that with all these other celebrities. Why wouldn't I do it with my buddy? Because I'm not a celebrity. I'm just a regular guy. Well, that makes it even fun. You don't have to do special stuff for me. Well, if you're ever down this way, I don't know how many rest I'll, I'll, uh, I'm going to buy a piece like that off you, though. I'm not joking. I love just take, it. Give me, a, uh, yeah, whatever anybody wants. Whatever you think you want, I can make it. And a lot of times, whatever you find it for, I'll sell it. But if you talk to Nicole, but, you know, this ain't a piece of sculpt. You know, this is a functional. People make this. So there's a certain price for it. It's just material. But I don't know. For me, I'm not going to make a thousand axes in my life. Right. So that drives That's the price That's why up. I want it. That's it's why like, I want it. I want that price because price. you made it. Well, I'll make you, you one. Whatever you want. We can go it's battle axe. Budget. I want that and I want a battle axe. How about that? Yeah, I'm gonna make some swords. I love weaponry. I love it too. I mean, probably. I'd sell. hang it though. I'd hang it on this like podcast. Hang it up high enough, your boys can't get it, right? Well, there you go. Of course. Well, yeah. I could probably uh, put barbarian hour or something. But yeah, anybody who wants, I love. My problem is, what I do is in like painting a wall, like. Uh, it's hard to find steady work. So I work in spurts. I'm like wrestling season, you know. But when I work, I work. Feast and famine. Feast and famine. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. It's been pretty good. The last, at COVID, you know, I'm kind of got a hustle, but I've been doing, you know, some carpentry work, stuff to stay busy. Yeah. But kind of hustle. It's been, and now once the new year hits and the show comes out, uh, which the show was probably a celebrity death match. Uh, it, it's a competition show. Oh, got it. Okay. So I'm actually going to be on Ty Pennington's new show. Uh, that's how I got on his next show. Uh, from my designer, got the job, and she kind of introduced me to Ty. I made this uh, cattle brand for a table he built. And uh, he, he used it on the show. So uh, I actually just got the release form today that says I made the cut. So I'm actually going to have, uh, I think, January 11th on HGTV, the tiebreaker. Uh, I'll be on. I did two episodes. So, nice, dude. And that's where I met Allison Victoria. And this is the wrestling. Like, if I didn't, wasn't who I was and seized the day. Uh, I thought I was going to do it with Ty, and then they throw this curveball. I'm like, well, Allison wants to forge with you. So I kind of did my thing, and it was probably only an hour, two hour event. And uh, literally a week later, she was telling me about the show. I got the call uh, as their lead fabricator, Mike Holmes from Homes on Homes, and Allison Victoria. Wow. And I was their lead guy. Uh, I can't really go into details. Cause, uh, don't. Yeah. If it's, if it's, uh, yeah, it might be in the can, but you can't. No, don't look it, the, can out of the bag, man. Uh, no, they're real crazy. Cause they don't want to ruin, especially these competition shows. Uh, but it yeah. was a real nail biter and a, a celebrity death match is four houses. And you have five weeks to build the house and design it finished from the landscaping. So you can imagine it was 18, 20 hour days. I think I had two days off. In five weeks, I actually lived in my camper. I was vintage camper uh, hooked up for mobile work, and uh, I didn't really live in it because it was like shacks. I was only sleeping two, three hours a night. But uh, 
that's like the wrestling tournaments trading me to be able to do that. A lot of people dropped off, you know, they don't make it the whole time. So, so keep out for that. Uh, hopefully I'll do some work with Mike Holmes um, and Allison's already talking, maybe some future work. So it'd be cool we'll to see how it goes. You know, it's, could end tomorrow or could keep going, but I'll always be a sculptor, fabricator. And, making uh, seven acts, making seven, uh, making the, seven and battle acts. acts, and that one that you have there already, I, I, I'm in. So, Jared, you got anything else for him? No, man. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad we connected again. It's been too long since we've talked, and uh, you know, we've talked yeah. more in these last two weeks than we have in the last, you know, what we lived together, how many years at Kent and then Sandusky, and now it's, it's nice to connect yeah. again. I guess John wants. It's, it's um, hard. To, I, don't, I haven't seen you in a while, so it's good to good to see you again. Yeah, you're we've been awesome. Talking, you're doing. Yeah, we've been talking of making a trip just to Sandusky. Uh, like to have my girls meet all you guys. And, yeah, but well, it, it's I just it's know, tough man. to get back to Ohio. But uh, maybe after this COVID thing, and uh, we can make something happen, or maybe we can all meet somewhere by the beach. Yeah, you let me know. Drew man. was talking about it, maybe a guy's trip uh, by my island here. Yeah, I know. Drew, we were just talking about it last night, actually, with my parents. And uh, yeah, Drew was talking about the island. He's like, man, before Sean or before Mark even moved there, I wanted to visit. And, um, you know, my yeah, parents talked about you last night, too. And they tell Mark, I said, what's up? You know, yeah, they're, the, they're the best. Stuff. Good family. I, I'm proud of you guys. Uh, it probably isn't a day go by. I don't think about both of you. And uh, thank you. It's kind of nice. I can see what you've done. It's kind of funny because I'll talk to people and tell them what I would do, and they're like telling me what I did because they watched it on my story, you know. Well, that's uh, what we, we crazy, said. Uh, isn't it? Zeb probably remembers more about you than you remember, Mark. That's what Mark. I was telling my <laughs> wife. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially stats. Uh, my stats, you probably oh, know. Crazy, man. So it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, I got a mind that's like a steel trap. But you know, that, you I know won I mean? my senior year, I won uh, Medina too, an MVP there. That really? Was a nail biter. I beat Ryan. Did you beat Bertine. there? I beat Bertine second round. I He was a JV behind Kozicki was out because of his neck. I don't know if I would have won it. So you there. beat Bertine. He would have been a freshman. JV yeah, he, he was a JV kid. And I was like, who the heck is this? Like he kept crying, uh, kept complaining, like on some of my chin whips or something. But it was like a because your style was wild too. And for anyone that doesn't know, yeah. obviously we know, but your style was you know, highlight reel yeah. action stuff, right? Yeah, high risk, uh, you know, mm -hmm. a little way over. I work a lot harder for the win than I needed to. Right, right. I kind of do that now. Uh, Wait, so how bad did you beat Bertine? You beat Ryan Bertine. You yeah, he was him. young. Uh, just solid, probably major, uh, you know. Well, you beat him I, good. He was, I was, you know, at my prime dialed in. Yeah, you were a senior. He was a freshman. Yeah, I just was like, who the heck is this freshman? I was like, you know. He's probably but he coming was, at you and coming at you more. Oh, God. And he, yeah, he, he wouldn't quit. And then I couldn't believe once he became – a ninja in college and uh just insane but who'd you beat in the finals oh some i think he was a wild card too and he he gave me a run for my money it was probably one of the most epic i think it was like 19 to 20 or something crazy uh, so you won 2019 with <laughs> you won madonna and top gun in the same year then, right yeah and putt bill d uh yeah, I was on fire. Uh, uh -huh. I think, you know, a lot was for my brother. and I was a lot of mental stuff. Uh, you know, if I would have had my old Mark Dennis, uh, I would have won. But I had good coaching, the board wines, uh, you know, even the Hurleys were in the stands. Everybody, you know, helped right. out. Yeah. And I think Coach Black. I just talked to Coach Black before. today. Yeah. yeah, he was real good. He uh, he was stretching me. I remember before my match, and mm -hmm. the Walsh guys were real close. And 
I love all those guys. I love hearing the stories on some of the other podcasts. Of the, yeah, Mike Ferris has a good one. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, it's, we could go on for hours. Uh, right. Yep. We, we have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely man we've gone on for hours but um worth everything you... Jared, i'm gonna hop off man yeah. i'm gonna hop off i gotta get to bed i gotta go to work tomorrow in pittsburgh so thanks mark you i guys... appreciate it man this is mark, fun. thank you for everything buddy yeah this is it's... Fun. you guys are the real deal uh, you I make can... it easy uh i'm probably doing some more podcasts now that i Do think it, it's man. a good story to get out uh for the sport and uh you got you have the stories man you won't regret it i think you know it's uh yeah. you, you've always been a storyteller and whatever room you're thrown in right you can tell stories to like you're saying you're you can paint a door or you can work do a million dollar chandelier and you're gonna be talking yeah. to them the same way and, and you have a story to them so yeah. so jump on those podcasts man do it i, I want to hear more yeah, of your experience. stories it's experience yeah. tell more man tell more stories because there's well, all thanks for there. having me yeah and awesome uh, man Keep it going, man. I love, I love being able to still be in wrestling with Flo, and you know, I'm an avid wrestling fan, even my daughters. So you guys make it real easy to keep them, keep it in there, you know. So. All right, my little buddy. Thanks, Thank man. You for everything.